My specialty is malnutrition and because of that I've seen I've seen many devastating but also inspiring things over my career. Some of the things I've seen in my work have been so devastating that I can't talk about them here. So I do want to look more at the inspirational side. I work, uh, I, of course I lecture here at the university, but I also work for international organizations, the World Health Organization, and I advise governments and other organizations. Today I just want to focus on one project in one area. This project encapsulates the core of what we want to talk about here, which is the promise. I was asked to conduct some field research in Rwanda in a particular province. The province has a child mortality rate of one in seven. So one in seven children won't reach their fifth birthday. It wasn't the same throughout Rwanda. This particular province was higher than others. I do a lot of assessment and evaluation, so I was asked to look at the causes of malnutrition. Why were so many kids dying? So, working with the university there, the Institute of Agriculture and Technology, we designed an evaluation tool, and six students from UBC traveled with me them in nutrition or in our, from our faculty. And last summer, these students partnered with 12 Rwandan students. And they actually conducted a household survey in 40 villages, over 400 women they interviewed. We use standardized questions, culturally adapted for the region. Um, Children were also measured, evaluated for the prevalent, we looked at the prevalence of malnutrition. These students, many of the students who were working with Melissa's team, had grown up without parents, without people to advise them in their lives. You talk about inspiration and promise. What we saw there I think it was probably hard for Melissa and some of the others to come back and listen to some of the complaints that we all have here. Many of these students had seen their families killed. And while our students were picked up in the bus at where we, exactly where we stayed, every morning those students, the other students, the Rwandans, had to walk there. Some of them it was two hours to get there. Learning is so important to them. Education. Education is the way out of, of poverty for these students, and they know it. So slowly our students became more aware of the reality for these students, and I think we're all humbled by the experience. We have so many opportunities. I certainly know I do. Um, but they saw the promise in these young people and their efforts. And I, I see those young people and the students as what are going to move that continent forward. We as a university have an obligation to help where we can, to provide resources, to help build capacity. My job is to help in the areas where the requests have been made um, to help develop culturally appropriate tools for intervention and that's what I do in different regions of the world um, because it's still going to take some time this isn't an overnight thing as a university we need to make our resources freely available 
as universities, great universities like Johns Hopkins are doing, that post all their course materials. We need to help build that educational capacity. To that end, I've taught and will continue to teach in Rwanda, and I'm helping the WHO build nutrition education programs in different countries. Because ultimately, we can't be flying in and out teaching from here. We need to help build the capacity of teachers. From the results that we have from the work the students did, that will help to guide appropriate interventions for the area as we try and determine what all is going on in this area called Kabungo. And we'll be going back in May. One of the things I want to emphasize about student, the student role here and in partnering with students there. I think often UBC thinks students head off thinking that they're going to be making this great contribution. And I think most come back realizing that they are the ones who've gained the most from this experience. I think students who travel or have these opportunities should take them, but recognize that they are learners in this. And as for myself, every day in the work I do is a learning experience and very humbling when I see how hard others have worked and what they have to do to get through each day. So on the research side, I don't do research for research's sake. I don't do research to publish articles. I do research to guide programs, and I do research that's requested, because my expertise is in interpreting this situation, doing situational analysis, interpreting it, and providing that information to governments and others. Um, Along the way, I like to give opportunities to UBC students so that we can help build their capacity as well through them having these experiences. The picture up there are the part of Melissa's group. They were the Rwandan students putting their hands together with the UBC students. And to me, that captures the essence of what we're talking about, the promise. It is the students in your age group who are working together to help build these solutions.